Radish, and Sandstorm. Okay. And today, we're getting what Sandstorm has been preparing a ton of. It's going to be the Arcadia versus the championship winner itself, the Kaya. I'm starting to see why Sandstorm was talking about all those things about how Great Sword actually isn't the best weapon in the game because he's been very, very good for this. But yes, he's been running with the Arcadia the entire time. And Impala on the Kaya. So interesting to note, despite Kaya getting hit by a lot of balance changes, which were just all nerfs, uh, Impala himself did state. I think these are the things that needed to be hit with the character, and I still think that the character is good. And that's why he's bringing it out here in Winter Championship, going up against Sandstorm, as both of them are kind of fighting yeah, off with the their down six. They both, neither one of them wanted to be the one to budge first, which yeah. is incredibly impressive. Not to mention, also, you have to think about this. Impala has a lot, like, has a huge target on him with the fact mm. that this is the previous champ, and you have a lot to prove. Not a lot of people believe that they could get that W today, and uh, Impala feeling a little stressed, too. But against someone like Sandstorm, just continuously barely being being missed by these D6, Taza. Yeah, this is crazy. Sandstorm jump dash jumping right into the down six. So something that's cool about this matchup between these two spear legends is that their down six function, I think, very similarly in a sense that they're laying a trap for their opponent to fall into. Uh, Impala holding the down six with a chainsaw effect to catch Sandstorm off of those jumps. Meanwhile, Sandstorm laying the trap on the ground to try to catch Impala grounded so that he can follow up with the finisher. That down air recovery just barely not comboing, but we'll see him go for that more often to finish off stocks with the great sword. Yeah, and this is the weapon that was really the big issue for pretty much everybody, whether it be Luna Godly or whoever, it doesn't matter. The bow was a problem in that previous game, but the D-Light Sarah is going to go ahead and at least get rid of that. That puts Sandstorm on the board. Yeah, it puts him on the board. He took an incredible amount of damage from Impala on the way through there, and Impala's at a state where Dial and Light recovery, I think, will do it. Impala's incredible at landing signature knockouts with the bow. I want to see if he can get that down sig with the spear again. Probably looking for that dash jump in, but there's that down sig. And Sandstorm doesn't get the jump afterwards to get the pogo off of catching him with the signature. Yeah. And now he's looking for some more damage on the recoveries, but Impala's doing a great job escaping. Yeah, you cannot leave any damage on the board against Impala. He's going to be start hunting. He's going to start hunting for that Nair pretty soon. It's pretty much the main KO option he had mm -hmm. back at BCX. But Impala is actually having a Ooh. bit of a tough time. All of a sudden, Toss getting in. There's the pogo. Oh. Weapon Toss down. Do we get the close out here? The weapon toss up. Pogo doesn't matter. Weapon toss down again, again. And he's already going to almost take that. Good job getting back on, but that was really close. Yeah, that was an amazing exchange of edge guard recovery, edge guard recovery. And at the very end, Impala makes it back, but he's not unscathed. As we see that neutral that comes through, and Sandstorm at this much damage one minute ago mm -hmm. takes the lead after some incredible edge guard pressure uh, and is now up two to one. Impala still looking for that neutral there that you were talking about, or anything there. Delight recovery finally he gets sent flying and the smoke trail, just all sorts of colors there with how much damage Sandstorm had before he went and took off to the skies. That and was we intense, too. We, we like, have an even game. Yeah, he was, I, he, like you said, that damage differential was so huge, and not just to mention, Impala kept reading Sandstorm yeah. a lot. So the fact that he finally got away from him like five Ooh. times in a row, that was beautiful. d -Sync, and tries to follow up again to try and get maybe a panic recovery upwards. Nothing happens out of that, but Sandstorm's starting to cook. Oh, he's putting the down six, and then he's mixing it up with these dash jump fastball down airs on the spear as well. Most of the gameplay from Sandstorm so far has actually been off the back of the spear after the great sword didn't work too much in the beginning of the game. I can see down six or down air coming out here, and last time when that down six hits, he gets that side light. He goes in for a huge read on a jump out of the side light. Impala dodges down and manages to get out of it, but that D light side air could have been huge. Recovery hits, and Impala brings Sandstorm to orange. Another recovery, oh, Ajax. Oh my god, this has gotten so incredibly close here, Taza. Right now, he's web toss up, gonna go over to the great sword. And see if he can try and close it. One of those new buffed enders, but that oh. depends if he gets a chance. And Paula's sending him back off stage. Weapon toss just gets him out. Oh, and the down stick catches the landing. And what a finish coming out from Impala, where we got to see the lead get torn away from the hands of each other at the very end with Impala clutching it with an amazing down stick finisher. A difference of one damage between both weapons there. Impala showing, hey, He's an all-arounder. No, it, no, no. it doesn't matter. His whole character's kit is going to be used, like you said, even with the changes to Spear Kaya. Spear and bow, I think, had six different things nerfed about them and three Kaya signatures. And still, looking at this, he's so darn good at mm -hmm. Kaya and taking Sandstorm out in that game number one. We're going right back to Apocalypse here, where I... I really don't know how to call this. I think Sandstorm's getting a better idea of how he wants to use Downsig against Impala, but what makes Impala terrifying is that no matter what the state of the game is, he finds a way to land these signatures, whether it's catching a landing, catching a dash jump, or whatever have you. But Sandstorm, this time around, a much better start. Which is really impressive to point out, too, because of the fact that he missed almost every D-Sig prior to that moment, but he never believed that the spacing was bad enough that he'd take a massive punish, which yeah. is the case. He barely took any punishes for it, and all you need is that one singular one to get the job done at the end. And his defense has been so on point, other than the start of this game where Sandstorm's kind of built up a decent lead.
Yeah, nice, uh, nice unarmed here. Side light waits it out. Never mind. The beetle comes charging forth, and Sandstorm with the wake up catches Coming Apollo through. off guard. And that that signature doesn't he travels a little bit further than maybe he was expecting there as Sandstorm gets a nice early knockout. Side airs from Impala means that he's going to try to get this edge guard here, but Sandstorm has been great with the spear uh, when it comes to this ground neutral game. The side lights usually work out in his favor, but that mm -hmm. time Impala was able to get his own D-Light side air off yeah. of it. I'm loving watching this right now, too, because we didn't get to see a whole lot of Arcadia last, uh, last year. We didn't much. Like, yeah. I think we saw maybe two times where people pulled it out in bracket, and uh, Sandstorm is making it look phenomenal right now as one Pogo comes through, going to avoid the other one and just gets through just enough with that recovery to avoid the, uh, yet another one. Yeah, Downsy comes through. Impala being careful not to jump right into that hurt box. Sandstorm puts on another downstick though, and that combos right into side air. Goes to the edge guard once again. Oh, keeps that poking so Impala good. off with the neutral lights. Look at the way that Sandstorm constantly like repositions himself too to get Impala to pull first, but goes a little bit too low. Even if he was able to try and find his way back up, he was probably getting caught by another dare anyways. And Impala finally gets one on the board. I still don't even feel super comfortable with the lead because of how good Impala has been at bringing the games back. Yeah, okay, that was big there. So last that changes time, my tone. <laughs> we, we, we saw this exact same scenario, but with Sandstorm in that much red. And I was thinking, Impala, you got what it takes to do exactly what Sandstorm did to you. And we might see that anyways, just with the stock difference here. Um, playing around that down to quite nicely, gets back onto stage, but that down light goes a little too far in, and Impala really having trouble getting around the down tick pressure coming up from Sandstorm in the Arcadia. Yeah, he's lucky he was able to avoid it that time because otherwise Sandstorm or probably is going to go for a chase. He's up a stock, and you know full well Sandstorm will chase you deep off stage if he has the opportunity oh. to do so, but he's not getting the reads on the dodges. He's instead yeah. just getting one hit a piece, and it's been a bit since I've seen a big string come out of Sandstorm. Oh, he, okay, he got the downline bridge that time around, but he hasn't felt confident enough to go for anything further because it's probably too committal, and that's a huge string from Impala. Gets the recovery towards the end. Uh, neutral sig off of a jump could be pretty big here. Coming up from the bow. I'm not sure how much he wants to go for that, though. Puts up the down, so he doesn't pivot it. I think if he pivoted it, that would have been the stock. The recovery comes through, and Sandstorm picks up a fresh spear. Yeah, baby. Sandstorm decided to switch on over. Weapon Toss now is going to get him out and get him the landing. Plus, still having it. Doesn't matter, so though. Good. Gets caught. Like you said before, he uses it both offensively and defensively in a way that you can only really do when you are that committed to a legend. Yeah, down sig comes through there pretty well for him, and that's another time we got the knockout, but he's so damaged. Now, this is where it's like, I haven't seen Sandstorm convince me that the down sig on the great sword has led into anything substantial yet, and Impala has an opportunity. Okay, that recovery comes through, and he really wanted to get as much as he could off that unarmed, but the recovery comes out from Sandstorm as a wake up, and Sandstorm has a convincing game too. And convincing I mean, like, indeed, 609 yeah. to 393, for, 420 on the spear damage there from uh, from um, Sandstorm was just on point, so accurate about all of his strings. It kind of slowed down a little bit at the end, and then we didn't really see too many of those bridges come through yeah. on reeds for the greatsword. It didn't matter though because the the spear was just enough to get the job done. What do you think? What do you think Apollo's gonna do in game three here to try and adjust around that? Well, and here, well, here's the adjustment. I was wondering myself if Apocalypse was gonna be a stage that he wanted to continue to go towards because Sandstorm was looking pretty comfortable there. Although I think the way Sandstorm was playing isn't exactly map dependent. The way he was covering the side of the stage, I think would have benefited a lot from uh, from having platforms there. So we'll see if Brawlhaven just means that Impala is able to get these knockouts a little bit earlier. Uh, we're gonna find out because Impala here now on Brawlhaven with the bow, Doing quite well, getting back to the stage, and Sandstorm hasn't been able to get any of those great sword finishers. But here's an opportunity for a down air edge guard. I really want to see what he can do with this great sword because last time you were talking about that 420 damage on the spear. The great sword's kind of been something that's just been in between Sandstorm picking up speed. Well, this is definitely the stage to get that to happen. You have no platforms to hide on, so it's only brawling now. It's yeah. just that flat stage, which makes those bridges way easier to consistently try and open up. But he's still forced over to the spear. Very close first start here. Nair won't be enough just yet, of course, but another Ooh. delight recovery. Recovery from that bow should be enough to do it. Oh, and he doesn't punish the neutral signature with the down sig. Instead, gets hit by the recovery, barely survives there. Nice job with the recovery on the way back. And what a, what a call out! That was with an that amazing call out. Yeah, that he was he was just put in disadvantage for like a solid, like 15 seconds in a row. And he's like, I don't care. I'm still swinging on my way back up. And that's just the fear factor that Sandstorm could do to you sometimes. He's never truly in a bad spot, mm -hmm. even when you think he is. Yeah, Impala getting caught by one down sig and decider there. And then just saying, like, okay, we're going to try it again. I'll jump right around it. Gets his own side air. Edge guards with the ground pound. Evens things up two to two. Weapon starves. And now he's pressuring Sandstorm, waiting for that new spawn to come in. Side light does not catch the dodge, but the Nair does. And a D-Light neutral light means that he's going to get some good damage on the Sandstorm.
Sandstorm. And Sandstorm, he, he tried to go for that down like call out once again. And now Impala mm -hmm. is actually adapting to these this down stick play style by trying to play stacked, being underneath Sandstorm. Yeah, big time. I mean, Impala's won. All right, up to that point, Impala oh. won like five interactions in a row. And now all of a sudden, Sandstorm getting something started. Got, got one bridge to get a three piece, but he doesn't get too much else after. Uh, I, I think. However, it kind of feels like the Great Sword is waking up here. Like I, we mentioned it yesterday, I think you need a couple games before Great Sword's really working for you, Ooh. even if he's played it all the way up to this point. Yeah, I, I just got to witness my first down sig into side air from the Great Sword there. So that's something where that, that, that signature is actually working out for uh, Sandstorm on the Arcadia. But Impala, not down yet. Gets back to the stage. Silent doesn't catch him. And that's a good. Uh, it's, a, it's better than nothing when punishing the neutral signature. And that time he gets the Nair as well. Jumps the Nair, falls, and immediately lands with the neutral light. And these do spot dodges from Sandstorm are not catching Impala off guard, but that down air will go punished, and this could be the edge guard for Sandstorm. Wapitao's over with the Greatsword. I like the mix-up, trying to get the bounce off of that to get a panic jump up. Still not enough just yet. Wapitao's up, of course. That's going to oh. send him to go low. I love the attempt. Pogo does find its mark. He's probably going to get the wall touch here. Still doesn't, though. Ground Pond finally, he finally takes that out. What an obstacle course Sandstorm set up. Two spears flying in the air and a down sig, and Impala was able to get through all of that until the very end when a ground pound came through. Now Impala, with the spear, has to find that finisher there. Pogo went into recovery. Look at this, so good. And, and I'll tell you what, Ajax, I wasn't expecting to see a spear showcase going into the first match no. of the Winter Championship here in North America, but that's what we have uh, between Sandstorm and Apollo right now, and it's incredibly fierce. Yep, multiple things. A, North America is just different. B, uh, I expected to see way more of the bow out of Kaya from, yeah. from the starter just because the bow was what was the problem last time. Impala's pretty balanced so far. Yep. We were seeing those 300-300 uh, damage splits, but I, I, I do see what you're saying. Um, Man, these down are so hard. Oh, oh, he jumps right into it, and he was sweating when that got hit. So he's got to be careful. When he touches the stage, he won't be able to hold on the wall very long. That's a really good mix-up, too, because of the fact that he's pretty much only ever covered the low range of that and decided to go high that time. Uh, now Greatsword is in the way. Weapon toss over, trying to catch him with the DC again. Paul is still being weapon starved. He should be able to get to it pretty soon, but it lands right in front of Sandstorm. Oh, and he's waiting for the, him to go right. <laughs> yeah. So that was a 50-50 on Sandstorm to go for either the down stick or the neutral stick there. He's like, okay, are you going to try to cover, get the weapon from above, or are you going to dash in and dodge back to get it from below? Uh, and Apollo ends up guessing correctly, but Sandstorm's still in the prowl when it comes to weapon starving, and oh, that would have been an amazing thing finisher coming out from the great sword oh my god we have like a winner's final excalibur set going on right now between these oh. two this is so incredibly close and bimpala is one good mistake away from on sandstorm They're from closing one it mistake away oh, actually He's looking for the signature finish there's the recovery and impala gets it at the very end what an amazing display of neutral prowess it's a four damage difference between these two players, Ajax. That's, I cannot believe it. That is it. Four damage separating the two. And uh, that time, it was way more bow heavy yeah. attached to Impala of uh, that game round. I think he was losing out on that spear mirror match in that previous game. And the bow here just got the job done. I remember one time where he had five to six interactions in a row, and Sandstorm just could not touch the ground. Yeah, and you were we were literally talking about that in the middle of the game, and I guess I just didn't really register that a lot of that damage was coming in from the bow. just Because... I, I mean, he had his spear in hand for quite a bit of that match. He just wasn't hitting him. Yeah, with it just right? wasn't yeah. actually hitting him. <laughs> so, so we're going to the Small Fortress of Lions now, and Impala has Sandstorm on match point. This is the reigning world champion going over against, I mean, the, the knowingest said, player in Brawlhalla Esports. The world right? champion. This is, this the go, if you will, to many. Uh, yeah. the, if you join, like Sparky said earlier, if you've watched Brawlhalla for five minutes, you know about Sandstorm. Mm -hmm. But right now, that you know, the storyline is trying to change. He didn't get to that, that podium finish at BCX, right. but this time around, he's put so much effort into this. So I don't count yeah. him out just yet. However, Impala is showing that that was not a one-time fluke. He's oh. still performing well. Yeah, and what I love about what Sandstorm has prepared for this is that this is an absolutely new play style of Arcadia that previously, oh, that side six so good. That's the first time we saw Impala ever let that rip. He's so good at Kaya Ajax, but what I was saying was is that I do feel like a play style with Arcadia that was previously theoretical or hypothetical, rather, uh, is being demonstrated by Sandstorm here now against Impala. And Impala, after three games, seems to have really uh, cracked the case here. Down six coming through, but Impala is just going crazy here. Nice down six into the recovery, and Sandstorm gets that edge guard there. And that's an amazing knockout coming out from Sandstorm, which I thought was honestly going to become a three to one stock lead at some point. It felt like it for a second there, too. But instead, he's able to like get, kind of close the gap. And that's pretty much what's been going on back and forth between these two. The gap's been getting closed well. I like his attempt at falling off with the neutralites that time. He hasn't really gone for that oh. before. But once again, Impala striking first here and now has Sandstorm on set point. Yeah, that down stick was fantastic. And, and the, 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 
the pace of the game is changing in terms of when Impala is using these signatures. It no longer feels like it's a dash back, catch the landing thing. Impala is going in, pressuring Sandstorm to the corners, and then hitting him with these incredibly hard hitting signatures and still getting the knockouts, catching Sandstorm in the air, getting the recoveries, goes for the neutral signature, and Sandstorm with the spear goes out the downs and gets hit by a Sarah. And now he has to be careful about the edge guard from Impala here. Goes out with that neutral signature. The owl does not connect, and Sandstorm with the double recovery could get the edge guard here with one good down light. He gets it down light, Cider. That's the second time that we've seen him have such amazing precision with catching the landing. That was perfectly placed to get him to land on a soft platform, too. He went for that double recovery and faded right yeah. underneath to bait him in the idea that that's what his safest spot was, and maybe he dodged a nair or another recovery. Instead, goes right underneath it and gets us to an even point. Oh. I want to see this go to game five biasly, oh, but yeah. <laughs> at, the at the moment, Sandstorm is making an effort. Oh, he goes up for the downer, makes up afterwards, and Impala slips right by. Landing opportunity here. Sandstorm does go over to the fresh spear. Looked like he wanted the old one. Side light, down light, side air. He goes in for that bread and butter, and now he's got the down six at the edge. And Paul has to go high, and the down light does not catch. And this the is Nairs that, are breaking up the pressure. This is that lineup of the previous game where Sandstorm was winning out on the deal, but this time around game number four here, uh, Impala's spear has looking has been looking much better. But he's going to make his way over to the bow. This is what's been getting worked on. It's already gotten two strings. Oh, the downs that comes through. Sandstorm slips by. Impala with the bow. He knows he's got Sandstorm to the point where any signature that connects could possibly be the game. Sandstorm goes for that weapon throw, pick up down sig, and the recovery clips. Impala with no jumps makes it back. I thought Sandstorm would go for the down light, but he likes to go in for those at the edge of the stage. of The downs that hits Ajax. He's one oh. signature away. It's not yet. It's not done just yet, but one more mistake will oh. do it. Here comes the great sword. So does he get a recovery? Does he get a good read on him? Down Decent, recovery. And recovery and he gets into a game number five. Sandstorm does not go down just yet, and we still get some more. This is the first match of the day, and we are already in what has been a phenomenal set. Oh my goodness. Say hey, Jax, this is everything I could have hoped for. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I kid you not, when I went over and I saw like what oh, looked, look at that. I was like, we're stream queue. I see him policy and storm. Give yeah, me yeah, yeah. that. Please, and this is exactly why only a 60 damage differential, but that I, was I still like so close. I like the slow-mo on that replay at the end there because we got to see that Impala was definitely still in Hitstone at the end, and I was waiting to be convinced about the follow-ups from that maneuver from Arcadia, uh, and Sandstorm is now showing exactly why he's trying to catch those landings on the Great Sword. He gets that recovery knockout, even on Fortress of Lions with a relatively high ceiling, and much to my surprise, we're back over here on Brawl Haven. Yeah, I was uh, pretty surprised considering how well, uh, I mean, that was a really close game in general, but yeah, Impala, Impala was brought it Looking so fast. good here, and I, I also remember back to the fact that this is this is Chat's pick prediction-wise mm -hmm. to take it all. So there is definitely some fan favorites going on, of course, for the goat himself to try and get this W here. But Impala is not making it easy at all, Taza. Yeah, for sure. And even after even after the uh, after BCX, it was a little surprising to me to see Impala not even in that top three. It was definitely fan favorites all the way through there. But there's a I think there, it's there's that. More, there's more reasons than just being a fan favorite as to why Sandstorm can be so high in the viewer vote. So we see that down six there hit into side light. Oh, that was such a great pivot down there. Okay, Sandstorm's really cooking here on this. He this, really this game is. Five. Let him cook. He's currently over on the side, but he gets caught by a neutral air, so he's going to get back on stage at least. Impala, this is very dangerous. Impala is so accurate at finding that delight recovery when he needs to at the right points, but. Instead, he gets caught, and that's going to be Sandstorm getting the first stock. Okay, the neutral sig. Sandstorm's gone for that a few times, and most of the times, Impala was able to punish, and that one actually catches him. Uh, now it's up to Impala here with the spear. Falls to the side air, goes in a little bit too far, and Sandstorm repositions to get one neutral light punish. Impala reverses the position, and that nice, what, what, a little bit of an oomph there with the dash to dip down and get the yeah. down sig there. And that's why I was talking about the change in pacing. Uh, with Impala as the set has gone on, whereas before it felt a lot more defensive, and now Impala's going out there with these defensive attacks and yep. using them aggressively. We are so more used to seeing him go for slide cancel neutral sig on the bow compared yeah. to anything on the spears. So the fact that he's now switching it up is going to trip you up in those positions because you don't expect him to be down there with you. But right now he's down there and he's enjoying the show of the left side of the stage exclusively by himself. Oh, the down ticket, the side light comes through, and Sandstorm just keeps, keeps putting out the pressure. Nair into recovery, doesn't hit. He's disarmed, and Sandstorm deep. He, he just slides out there with that attack. Is and now Impala can't even get a weapon. And Sandstorm starting to switch it up to more neutral lights at the ledge as well. But that's going to be the great sword to close it. And this is a big comfortable lead he has. However, you have to think back to that previous game, too, where he had a lead like this, and Impala brought all the way back. So you cannot get too comfy here if you want to close this out. 
Oh man, yeah, you are absolutely right. And look at this, the Nair dodge just barely by Sandstorm. Impala tried to dash to pick up the weapon, but Sandstorm steals it away. And now with the spear on the edge guard, Impala has to work extra hard to get past this wall slip. It's gonna be at two, at three. He gets neutralized off, and he hasn't been touching oh. Sandstorm. Downlight, side air, dare, dodges out of the way. Sandstorm continues the pressure relentless. He won't back off right now, and he was a good reason for it. Like you said, he'd count down those resources. It was getting to the point where he could make that attempt at that dare that he was looking for. But but now goes in, doesn't get anything off the dodge, but he's starting to get some data in the neutral oh. sink, misses! Misses, Impala doesn't go in for the punish, dashes in, doesn't get hit by the down sink, the Nair hits. Impala needs a strong recovery here to be able to bring it to a one stock to one scenario. Both players <gasps> fighting to stay in the winner bracket, the down air, the, the weapon toss, oh my the down God. sink. Taz, this is so intense, <laughs> so intense right now. Uh, Impala's gonna go ahead and get over to the spear, one recovery, puts himself into a one stock game, and we are oh, at said there. one stock game. Okay, this is tough. Impala by no means has those string heavy weapons that can get the early knockouts unless, I mean, save a bow ground pound. This is going to be quite the mountain to climb. Good start with the side light, side light. Right. D-Light side air. Sandstorm makes it back to the stage. That's a great punish coming from Impala, the he's, dash of dare. He's opened up a ton already, but there Yo, it is, no, not air. just yet. That was so close, but Sandstorm just needs one more good read, and that'll be it. Here comes the spear. Does he go for recovery soon? Who knows, but right now, Impala is gonna fall to the Sair, and that is your BCX ship falling to your the world champ. Sandstorm striking back, showing that that effort is playing through as this Arcadia continues him through this top 32. Oh my goodness. I, I, by, by all means, this is an upset. Uh, Sandstorm at PR 27, uh, not as active in the previous year as he was throughout most of Rahala history, despite the credentials that he's got. Impala is the reigning world champion, and he just got taken down in game five. Last mm -hmm. stock by Sandstorm, who is, by all means, to me, a completely new breed of player in Brawlhalla with what he has prepared for the Winter Championship, how he's playing the Arcadia, and how he competed against uh, Impala, who honestly looks even better to me on Kaya than he was at BCX. Yeah, and which is crazy somehow. <laughs> yeah. That, what a, oh, and that's, that's winner's I, round one. That oh was, that was only to start off top 30.